We also explored the graph of the reciprocal function of x, y equals x reciprocal as y equals 1 over x. And we saw that this is how the graph looked. And you can see, as x gets closer and closer to 0, when x is, say, 0.1, 1 over 0.1 will become 10, 1 over 0 0.01 will become 100. And that's what this green portion is here. We color coded it so you can see what happens to each part. At 1, 1, you will have 1, 1. But then when x becomes very large, like 10, 100, 1,000, the y coordinate is going to be 1 over 100, which is 0 0.01. 1 over 1,000 would be 0 0.001, and so on. So that's what the shape is here. When x is closer to 0 but below 0, like negative 0 0.01, you will have negative 100. So that's what this blue portion here is doing. It's shooting towards negative infinity. But when x is going towards negative infinity, like negative 10, negative 100, 1 over negative 10 is negative 0.1. 1 over negative 100 would be negative 0 0.001. And so that's this red portion of the graph. So you can see how all of these components, what happened to them when you had 1 over x. Let's look at the reciprocal function of x squared. Again, we've color coded it and similar principles. You can see that when you are closer to 0, either on the left or on the right, since they're all positive numbers, from the left and from the right, the graph will shoot towards positive infinity. Whereas when your x goes to positive infinity or negative infinity, you will have 1 over large numbers, which will get smaller and smaller, but from the positive side. So again, x equals 0 and y equals 0 are your asymptotes. The original function was not 1 to 1, and neither is the reciprocal function. The domain of the reciprocal function got broken at 0. So you can see you cannot have 1 over 0, and therefore at 0 x equals 0 is not part of your domain, but it's negative infinity to 0 and 0 to infinity. The range became 0 to infinity since we cannot achieve 0. You can get closer and closer to 0. So x equals 0 and y equals 0 are going to be your vertical and horizontal asymptotes. So this is a good time for you to pause the video and explore on your own what happens to the reciprocal function of x cubed? So if you have f of x equals x to power negative 3 or 1 over x cubed, why don't you go ahead and see what will happen to its graph. Pause the video and see what you can do. So graph it and then determine if it's 1 to 1. Find its inverse if you can. If it is 1 to 1, find domain, find range. And if there are any asymptotes, list those. This would be a good place for you to review all the concepts we've learned so far. Go ahead, pause the video, see what you can do. Don't just sit there waiting for my answer. Come on, let's go. All right, so assuming you've come back, you probably saw, again, same principles when you have your x value is getting closer to 0. 1 over those are going to become very large. When x is negative, closer to 0, it will go to negative infinity. So that's what uh, this part is here and over here. When x is very large, going to infinity, 1 over x cubed is going to become very small. Similarly, from the negative side, negative infinity will have negative, but very close to 0. So that's where your graph is. You can see the original x cubed graph was 1 to 1, and so is the reciprocal function. So to find inverse, we'll have to set x and y interchanged, and then solve for y. To undo cubes, you take cube root. So 1 over cube root of x is going to be the inverse of this function. Domain, again, broken at 0. So negative infinity to 0, 0 to infinity. And the range would be negative infinity to 0, 0 to infinity, since we can't attain 0 as a function value. 
and x equals 0 and y equals 0 are again your vertical and horizontal asymptotes. So again, we have x to negative 2n powers, which is 1 over x to 2n powers. So it could be 1 over x squared, 1 over x to the 4, and so on. These graphs will be similar to the ones you see right here, where x equals 0, y equals 0 are your vertical and horizontal asymptotes. As x goes closer and closer to 0, the function value shoot to infinity from both sides. As x goes to infinity or negative infinity, then the function values both on both sides go to 0. On the other hand, if you have x to power negative 2n plus 1, or 1 over x to power 2n plus 1, so 1 over x cubed, 1 over x to the fifth, and so on, you have similar thing happening here. As x goes to 0 from the left, the function values go to negative infinity. As x values go towards 0 from the right, the function value shoots to positive infinity. As x goes to negative infinity, y coordinate is negative but closer to 0. As x goes to positive infinity, the y coordinates getting smaller and smaller positive but closer to 0. So for even and odd reciprocal functions, we can summarize everything we've seen in the functions as below. x equals 0, y equals 0, our vertical and horizontal asymptotes for the 1 over x to even power. You also have when x is not 0 and x gets closer and closer to 0, that 1 over x to the power 2n shoots to infinity from the left and from the right. You also have that when x goes to plus or minus infinity, 1 over x to even power goes to 0. For odd, for odd powers, again, x equals 0 and y equals 0, vertical and horizontal asymptotes. When x goes to positive infinity, you have 1 over x to power 2n plus 1 goes to 0. When x goes to negative infinity, same thing happens. And again, because the values are positive or negative, will dictate whether 1 over x to power 2n plus 1 stays above or below the axis.